It is 8.33 on November 15th. I woke up this morning. I couldn't, I know I had dreams all night last night. I can't remember most of them. But when I woke up this morning, a word just came into my head like they sometimes do, and the word was overdose. And then when the word came into my head, overdose, my cat meowed at the exact same time. So that is concerning because of these forced relapse attacks that are being done on Chris. But there's a lot of stuff going on at the same time. It's like, bam, 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 bam. And so what do you focus on? So I want to focus, first of all, I want to say that that happened, that the cat meowed at the same time the word overdose came into my head. And also I want to mention that I'm concerned about my cat, that it seems like my cat is sometimes being harassed. She sometimes seems to have problems, with, and both cats were like this. They have problems with their ears sometimes. That I've taken them to the vet, and there's no known origin. So I think that this is something that's being done to them with directed energy weapons. And I noticed also that the whiskers on the top of this remaining cat's eyes, I have one cat left, and this cat is actually really helpful to me because the cat wakes me up at key times when I need to remember things. And so that makes the cat a target. And the cat, the upper eye uh, whiskers over this cat's eyes are all curled up in an abnormal way now, as if they've perhaps been attacked by some type of directed energy or burned or something. So I'm just going to put that out there that my uh, I have one cat left. The cat is actually very helpful to me, and I think that the cat is being harassed and also targeted and in danger, specifically because the cat is helpful to me. So... Um, the next thing I want to talk about, I'm focusing right now on my phone on this, um, just me writing down that I was, cons there's a journal entry from July 20th, 1991 that I was, uh, I started to actually th talk about this, I think maybe on a video, but then I became shocked by some of it to the point where I just stopped because I started to see things, a lot of things in that particular entry relating to what ha would happen in my life later. And including what I think is actually a reference to my daughter's dyslexia, my daughter's learning disability. Um, before, this was a solid year probably before I ever met my daughter's father. But um, I need to, uh, you know, I wanted to talk about that, but I, when, I, when I really started to understand, I was first looking at it because of Gary Brusca and things related to the Brusca family. But then I saw that there was something that appeared to be like, it, you know, a foreshadowing of the particular type of what I thought was dyslexia that my daughter had, but I know my daughter is also um, subject to mind control. So that just shocked me when I saw that. It had to do with, um, you know, in the stream I saw Native American people beating on a box that said war corn, and they were saying their vowels first and then consonants. And my daughter, before she was diagnosed with a reading disability for years and years, couldn't be understood because her vowels and her consonants were getting all mixed up. And I also found out that that war corn is in fact a mas another, yet another Masonic reference. There's a book uh, relating to that in Freemasonry, corn and war, and corn is actually a, a Masonic symbol. Uh, that needs more attention later. But what I wanted, I wanted to, I was also looking for, what I was really here looking for was the image that I saw a few, t a few days before the fire exploded in LA an image about Salvador Dali's clocks melting, but I don't even see it written down here. So maybe it was something that I thought I had written down, but didn't actually write down. But it certainly was a, a dream image that I had. But at the time that I had this image, you know, right before all of this, there was also a lot of other stuff. Our, our breathing was being affected. I was getting attacks on my heart that were very terrifying. Um, I was getting these fake opioid symptoms when I wasn't taking opioids. So there was a lot going on um, in the days before this fire started. These two fires both started on the same day. So it looks like I didn't in fact write down about the Salvador D Dali's clocks melting, which is odd because I, I felt like that might, might be a false memory because I remembered writing it down. I remembered having that dream. Um, but I can't find it in here.
you know, I see things in here all the time that I don't remember. <laughs> but then, you know, this is something I remember and didn't write down, I guess. Um, so, the other thing that I want to mention, and this was actually a dream that I remembered very clearly, at least after I had it so that I could write it. There was a dream I had about crows that I'm trying to figure out exactly what the meaning of. But this dream was weird because I fell asleep. I woke up and then I tried to go back to sleep, I guess, or something. But it was a different type of dream. It was a dream where I kind of could see something in front of my, you know, eyelids before I slept. And it was almost more of a, a half awake. It was like I was not asleep all the way. It was more of a trance. And almost as if I was seeing this, it was a completely different type of, con not well, it seemed completely different to me, type of consciousness than you normally have when you dream. It was more like, um, almost like, I don't know how to explain it, like a guided vision of some sort. But um, this has to do with, I mean, I, I, finding a dead crow, and it reminds me of a crow that I saw in a staged trash. Uh, you know, I've, I've pointed out in some of my videos these staged trash piles that are symbolic. And a few months ago, there was one of those sort of areas where there's a bunch of staged trash, and it included a dead crow. And it looked like a party had happened or something like, and there was a dead crow amongst it. And I feel like that, I I took fo some photographs of that trash pile, but I feel that that might have been misleading. Um, I feel like maybe they were trying to say that, uh, I think, you know, so if you, if you stage, if you create symbolic language, you can lie with a symbolic language. And uh, that goes on a lot. The only reason I've recently just started to actually maybe call out certain things, like, for example, um, Budweiser and McDonald's. And um, I haven't seen a lot of Starbucks stuff lately, but Starbucks is another one that I used to see a lot. If something's repeated over and over and over to the point that I think that maybe that needs to have attention called to it, then then I'm giving it a little more credit. But if somebody's leaving some sort of sign for me and it's just a one-off or it seems like maybe somebody has a vested interest in actually falsely accusing someone, I'm trying not to make it public. I'm trying to, you know, reserve judgment and be a little bit conservative in, in um, you know, wh whom I'm accusing of contributing to the corruption that's contributing to all these mayhem that's going on. For example... About this time, early November, I saw a, uh, outside of the Oregon Clinic, um, now I know all the medical organizations are corrupt, so there's no, there's no, med I've, I've tried every type of medical organization that I could possibly try in Portland, and if they aren't corrupt when I first visit them, they'll be corrupt by my second visit. I just get followed around, and the doctors are all paid off, and, you know, probably also coerced with negative consequences into um, becoming corrupt. So I walked outside the Oregon Clinic. There was a black glove thrown outside the front door and some other little signs of corruption. And I decided not to call them out just because, for one thing, they're no different than any other medical organization. And the problem is the corruption in the medical industry is completely overwhelming. So I'm mentioning this in video after video, and I just, I really think something needs to be done about this. It's extremely dangerous, especially to somebody who has any, you know, um, might even possibly become a whistleblower. So um, it's very dangerous, the medical corruption. But anyway, I decided not to call out the Oregon Clinic specifically because I didn't see any evidence that they were any more or less corrupt, well, any, certainly not any more corrupt than any other organization. Um, so I just want to say about that crow, I think crows are code for, um, a lot of the crows around here are mind controlled. So the mind controlled birds in my dreams seem to show up as trapped birds, trapped crows, trapped hummingbirds, things like that. And I think that crow as a symbolic animal represents, um, people involved with covert technology, maybe spies of a certain sort. And so I think that, that that staged scene was trying to say that somebody had been maybe corrupt and paid off um, that might not have been. 
And that's, that's the way I think about it. Um, I've had crows be very helpful to me, actually, in this p past year, as far as giving me hints about what to be concerned about, what to talk about. And lots of different crows have showed up. They, they cycle through. And in the past, I've had crows around me, and it's always the same family of crows. They're kind of mark out their territory. But um, I have crows, lots of different crows coming by now, and I just think it's um, mind control, and so they're being used as um, messengers. So there's been a lot of covert help for me since um, last April that I didn't have in the past. And so I think some people might be trying to sabotage that, and I think maybe that's what that dream was about. There's other stuff in that dream, but um, that's that's what I kind of feel like that dream was about. I had a dream. Right after that, so that was at 5 a.m. on November 12th. Then I dreamt about George Harrison, and I had this long conversation with George Harrison. And then he said something, so I'll just read it. I'm at some kind of gathering, and the Beatles are there. Something weird happens with kittens, something connected to mind control, something connected to George Harrison, his writing. <clears throat> I don't know what this is, and... Um, I might need to know more about George Harrison to know that. I end up talking to George for quite a while. I tell him something about mind control, something happened to me related to mind control. He says, could be. I'm not surprised you were ground zero. He either says you were ground zero or you were were at ground zero. And probably both of those things are correct in a way. Okay, so I try to explain to him how I think beetles were used for mind control with me, though I don't entirely remember. this In this dream, I have no awareness of George being passed on. He's just alive. And in fact, I think all of the band, in other words, the Beatles, are around. I start talking to him about a song or songs. I feel embarrassed because I don't really know his catalog from the 1970s. I say you guys released a lot of albums in the 1970s, but I have the sense that especially George did. So I mean, you guys, the Beatles all released a lot of solo albums in the 1970s, but I have the sense that especially George did. Not sure what the deal with the kittens is. Some hostess of the party is doing something with the kittens. This relates to the cats being being used, obviously, to me. The cats being used as links of some sort, but also as trauma. I think to myself that it is amazing to meet the Beatles. I think it's funny because it kind of looks like Melt the Beatles. I think about how unbelievable it would be to my teenage self. I hope I didn't write anything bad about George in my journals. So I think it's interesting that this word is meat, but it looks like melt. Because melt relates to mind control. Um, and the only thing I can remember writing about George in, in my journals has to do with, um, has to do with a band, like a fantasy band that my friends and I had in high school that would be called the Ladybugs. It would be an all girl Beatles. And in that journal entry I wrote, um, and I mean, I guess it was correct that, um, so there were four of us, and so we all got to pick a Beatle. You know, we were kind of like emulating the Beatles. We weren't going to be the Beatles. We weren't going to be a Beatles cover band or a Beatles tribute band, but we wanted to be like the Beatles. You know, we were thinking about marketing, obviously. And so, you know, um, they put made me George because I played guitar. I was the only one who actually played guitar or any instrument, as far as I know. Um and in the journal, I wrote that I was offered John, but I took George, as if George was sort of like some kind of consolation prize. Um, so after I had this dream, I, I heard, actually just this morning, I went back to look at some of the, and in fact, George did do a lot of solo stuff that I really wasn't aware of, and including an album called, or I think a song and an album called In the Material World. Which I didn't even know about. I mean, I didn't even know about. I didn't know that he was putting out solo albums while he was still in the Beatles, even. But the material world is significant because of Madonna's song, Material Girl. So Madonna really was probably making a reference to that journal entry where I was George. And um, Madonna has a lot of stuff actually connected to me. And specifically, I think, connected to me and the Beatles. Uh, and another one is a riff, which I've mentioned, but I haven't gotten into it in depth. Um... Part of the song, Like a Virgin. 
uh, which relates to some of my guitar playing. As far as the ground zero thing, um, I've already written a little bit about how my journals seem to have figured into the 9-11 attacks. I didn't cover another journal entry that I also think figured in the 9-11 attacks, and that journal entry, in fact, might be in the same journal as this George thing, which was 1983, so maybe this is sort of supposed to sort of encourage me to go back to 1983 again. Um, but the difference between you were ground zero or you were at ground zero, um, there might be some information to be found in some of the businesses that were in the Twin Towers, or uh, a lot of them were, I think, Japanese or connected to Japan. The designer of the Twin Towers was a Japanese-American from Seattle. And the Twin Towers were built in 1971, which is when the mind control efforts on me really accelerated. So, so I think saying you were ground zero, you were at ground zero, I think both of those things are in a sense correct. But this dream was on the 12th. So the fires, I don't remember when I first started hearing about the fires. Was the dream on the 12th? Yeah. The, I, re, I do remember not, I hadn't heard about the the fires before that clock melting dream and the fires I heard about in Malibu a few days after the clock melting dream. I didn't know there were any fires going on when I had that dream about the clocks melting. But you can see on the 4th, I'm dreaming about this weird face and its connection to electrical outlets. I dreamt about scare faces a lot in those days, in the early days of this month, November. And then this dream about the hermit tank, exercise wheel, bring them out of the tank. This was, by the way, um, this would have been on the 3rd of November. For a moment, place back in the, there's a metal floor thing. I want to make sure they don't get caught in it. Wake up, images of writing, yelling, drunk, Arcada. So I don't know, but you know, um, at this time I was working on this dream about the bridge which I later realized was the I-35 bridge that fell down 12 years after that dream. And the fact that there were, in, in that dream, there were cracks. And in that dream, the bridge was new. And all this stuff, and it just it just kind of blew, that's another one that just kind of blew my mind. I mean, sometimes these things blow my mind so much I get floored for a minute, and I don't, I don't know which direction to go. Um... So uh, that bridge, supposedly, if you look at the pictures of that bridge, the side of that bridge that fell down had a metal structure underneath it. The other side looked like it was a concrete structure. And they said that the sheets underneath the bridge were cracked. So I think that that relates to what this dream is about. And, you know, I suggested that, I mean, obviously somebody knew something was going, either... Either somebody saw my dream and did something to the bridge as a result of the dream. That seems to happen. That's what the 9-11 attacks were partly. Or the dream was describing something that was already going on or already in the works. That perhaps the bridge was being attacked with directed energy weapons for some reason. And I think if that is suspected, I mean that is, you know, looking like a possibility, then the thing to do would be to find out if anybody made money from that bridge collapse. Who, and if anybody made money from that bridge collapse, who was it? Or if it possibly was a retaliation of some sort. But I, I would look first at who made money from it. Um, or possibly that they knew that there was something wrong with the bridge and didn't do anything about it. Um but uh, yeah, that's just, it's just very, very weird that that showed up in my dream the way it did. And it also seemed to be that same dream seemed to relate to the hospital that they now call the Masonic, something like Masonic Children Research Hospital across the street from Augsburg College that has these peacock colors on the building. 
So that seemed to be connected to this bridge situation. So anybody that really wants to find out what's going on needs to look at who made money from that bridge and see if there's any potential connections to that um, Masonic Children's Hospital that's across the street from Augsburg College. Well, I just covered a whole lot of subjects in 20 minutes. I'm going to stop this right here. Actually, no, I'm starting it up again. So, okay, I because, okay, here's something weird. So let's just, let's just, because context is important, and I'm still too close to all this stuff to really understand what's going on here, but the hermit crab tank, okay, this is, let's, let's, let's see what's going on here. So we are now, this is the third, the third of November, 11.50, so I had fallen asleep for a few minutes, and I had this dream of the image of the hermit crab tank exercise wheel. Why, as I was waking up, would there be images of writing yelling, drunk, Arcata? The only thing that that brings to mind is me living with Michael in Arcata and him coming home drunk and me yelling at him for being drunk. That's the only thing that really comes to mind. Now, I did live in Arcata for a short period of time with Willie. But Willie wasn't a yeller, a person who yelled. So I really have no idea why that's there. But then at 2 in the morning, I'm dream this is what I write down. What the heck is this? I know it's supposed to be a scary face, and it's also supposed to be like an electrical outlet, outlet but what am I writing there? It looks like spins or switches. Oh, I know. It spins or it switches to the QFC sign because I'm also dreaming about weird faces that are distorted, almost as if the, you know, like, so if it spins, then it would kind of look weird and distorted and stretched out. Switches to QFC sign. Face also like a choice. Connect between the distorted face and legs. I mean, when I look at that, I think it looks like an electrical outlet. I just, I think this is a very weird, I'm not awake kind of dream. Scare faces. But, um, the QFC sign came up earlier, didn't it? The QFC sign came up here on 10-31-2018 at 8 a.m., and this is that dream where I'm on a bridge between Vancouver, be between Washington and California, singing, I'm on a bridge, I'm in the snow, and other people are on the bridge, it's cold, it begins snowing. I sing about the ice on the bridge, so that connects with, again, it connects with the Vancouver Bridge, it connects with the bridge in Newport, the ice on the bridge. It could be the ice. This might also connect with the I-35 bridge, ice and snow. That could cause cracking. Heating and cooling can cause cracking. So if somebody had directed energy weapons, if there had a, was a bridge with metal supports and somebody had directed energy weapons, then in cold weather, like in Minnesota, you could heat the metal in the bridge, obviously. Directed energy weapons seems like obvious that they could do that. They're microwave weapons. You can microwave the metal, heat it up, and then it would cool, and it would heat it. If you heat it and cool it, it's going to crack. I see visions of clouds moving in. Arrow pointing down to a blue and yellow label like QFC colors. Now this is a dream again. It was like a 10 minute dream. I had only slept for 10 minutes. This is there's absolutely there can be absolutely no doubt or argument that this was a programmed dream. Then at the I wrote this down at 8 a.m. at later that day, that same day, the girl from my hometown fell from an apartment 10 stories. The apartment building was in Minneapolis in Dinky Town near where I used to live. It was called The Bridges. The apartment building was called The Bridges. So I do, yes, I believe this is about, among the other bridges, I believe this is about the I-35 bridge and how it cracked. And I believe it cracked by being heated and cooled. And it, this implies that it was 
it was taken down on purpose. So what you need to ask, if you care, is who profited from taking down from this bridge falling. And several people were killed when this bridge fell during rush hour. So well, after I had this dream, I connected it to visiting the Klamath Bridge with Michael in 1986. I do think that's also implied in there because of the, and the reason why I think I connected to that is because of this, the Berkeley stuff and the golden bears, which are on the bridge. So I think all of this is deliberate. These, you know, combining two or three scenes or two or three locations or two or three situations into one is really typical for these dreams. And you start to pick them apart and they're like spider webs. They just connect out in different directions. But they, these are real connections. They're not... And then there was the dream about taking the hermit crabs to the beach for some reason. So there's the hermit crab again. But this time the hermit crab tumbles out of its shell and it won't survive. And this I relate to um, the picture of me and Itzy and, um, taken in fourth grade. And Itzy being killed a couple years ago by being thrown from a car. And Itzy's niece being killed the same night as my brother-in-law in the same town. On March 20th, 2017, both of them murdered. So these are telling me what's going on. These are all mind control situations or situations involving that type of weaponry, such as microwave weapons. But the, what I want to I want to mention one more thing about the QFC sign because the QFC sign obviously is an image. So I mentioned how images link dreams. Um, hermit crabs is a link. The QFC sign is a link. But okay, and here's another one. Okay, so in this one, from this is from the first. This is from the 2nd of November, and it's a dream immediately after falling asleep, so that's again, I mean, these are all, these are all programmed dreams, but you especially know if it's, if it's not in normal REM sleep. Um, so there, so the TV was on when I fell asleep and there was a news segment on Alzheimer's care as I was falling asleep, you know, that you kind of half heard as I was falling asleep. So the first thing I do when I fall asleep is I dream I'm in Minneapolis at the home of my grandparents, both of whom had fake Alzheimer's or fake dementia. It wasn't even, I don't know if it was Alzheimer's, but it was fake dementia, both of them who were tortured by implants at the end of their lives. In this dream, both my grandparents have passed away, which is actually real. I'm in their bedroom. I find at first a cassette cover. It's like I bought, brought the tape home with me last time, and now it's just the cover. But I throw it in my luggage so I have it, a smoke color cover. I think and it will take up space in my luggage, but it's better to have it. Then I go to their TV set. I see... It looks like their TV set was set up to view emails, and there are photos from family. I start looking at the photos, and I come across a video of some sort that I recognize as being devised to trigger. Yes. I feel like it has a Australian or surfer theme. I suddenly realize the TV is a surveillance device, and so I start to make mock it or make fun of the TV. I give it a two-finger bird, so I stick my two middle fingers up, and I pull my eyes down and make a monster face, like at the end of the heart-shaped box. And I hear the words, I woke up this morning to a trigger, and I wake up seeing images like sticks after sleeping maybe 15 minutes. So the part about this, the two finger bird, which is, this is right after dreaming again about the, the QFC. And so what I realized is that when, and there was an elevator connected with UC Berkeley going down. So elevator dreams are really common dreams that I've had over the years as, and when I started researching all this stuff and going online, um, I very quickly came to thinking about the death of the singer Prince. And maybe this connects to why I dreamt the word overdose this morning. I I can tell that the Prince thing is a very intense topic. 
Uh, and it's obviously fishy. There's just no question that it's fishy. Even if you don't know about directed energy weapons and fake overdoses and all this stuff, it's still fishy. When I started, when I had these dreams, so one of the dreams that I had in that, say, say a three-day period had to do with an elevator connected to UC Berkeley that goes down. Another, another couple of the dreams connected to bridges uh, the QFC sign shows up, or the colors of the QFC sign show up in a couple of these dreams. So when I was looking online, I saw the thumbnails to Prince's video for Let's Go Crazy shows him holding two fingers up in the air. They're not his middle fingers, they're his pointer fingers. The song Let's Go for Crazy is a song where he talks about not letting the elevator bring us down, or to me it sounds like break us down. And I had never, other than that, I didn't wasn't familiar with the lyrics of Let's Go Crazy, but um, the, all, the whole song is significant. Uh, where he recorded Purple Rain is significant. The dates around the recording of Purple Rain are significant. They connect to my grandparents. They connect. And so, and also the QFC sign, because if you look at the video for Let's Go Crazy, there is a section where there's a sign that looks a lot like the QFC sign and something, the sign says something about, I can't read the whole sign, but it says something about going up or high or something like that. So the video is worth looking at, the songs worth looking at, the dates and the connections and all that stuff with Let's Go Crazy are worth looking at. Um, but this has been put in together with a series of dreams connecting to some stuff going on in Minneapolis, specifically Minneapolis. Minneapolis.